PSA Treasurer Christina Ginty will be leading the evening's questions and answer period. Before we begin with questions, I would like the candidates to take a few minutes and introduce themselves. I moved here in 1997 after having served seven and a half years in the Air Force uh, and uh, 42 and a half years with uh, DuPont. Um, my uh, education, I uh, have a bachelor's degree from RIT in photographic science and a master's degree from uh, <laughs> I was wondering what the chime was. <laughs> uh, a master's degree from RIT in uh, organizational management. Um, was a human resources manager for DuPont for my last uh, 19 years. Uh, like I said, we moved here in 1997, uh, and I became uh, involved with the school board in uh, probably around 2015. Voice. Uh, Ty and Reese were going to school, and uh, I decided that uh, uh, maybe being part of the school board, being able to contribute to uh, the success of the organization of the, of the district uh, is something that would be fun. I've been on the school board for two terms, and uh, I think we've had some pretty successful uh, endeavors uh, during that time. Thank you. Next, Reese from Azar. Hello, my name is Rachel Maciers. Um, I am a new thing graduate, class of 2006. Uh, I am a mother of three future alumni who are back in the corner there. <laughs> um, I'm currently the business director at the Blackboard Historic Palace Theater. I've been there for about a year. Prior to that, I stayed home with my children. Um, I did homeschooling for a year, so God bless all the teachers out there. Um, currently, I am the vice president of the Alumni Association. I will be the president next year. The last two years, I have organized New Thing Community Day along with John Syracuse. And last year, I sat on the tourism board for New Thing. Um, I've also done the uh, giving tree for the Alumni Association. <laughs> which has been a huge success the last two years. So thank you to the community for that. Um, after high school, I went to Niagara University. I have my bachelor's degree in special event management. Um, so I'd like to make every district event special. And that's all I've got. Thank you, Rachel. Next, Corey Murray. I've been a district resident since 1996 um, when my husband Michael and I bought our first home. We chose New Fame because we believed then, like we do now, that it's a great place to um, raise a family and a great district to send your kids to school. I'm a graduate of Wilson, probably not the best way to start this out, but that's where I came from. Um, so it, it means a lot to me to find a district that, like I said, we could raise our kids in and that we were confident in, and that's why we chose New Fame. Um, I have three children with Mike, Matthew, Zachary, and Elizabeth. They are all New Fane graduates, um, and I'm proud of the education that New Fane gave to that. I retired in 2019 after 23 years as an office manager in the healthcare field, um, and I was blessed to be home with the kids during COVID. Um, it was an opportunity that I wouldn't trade because, as we all know, that was difficult, um, not only on families, but on the students. I've been involved with a lot of different organizations during the time that all of the kids have gone through the school district. Um, currently, I am just completing my third year as a board member with the alumni. I volunteered and then became a board member uh, with the PTA and last year served, uh, completed serving two years as president. Um, I do help out you know, with the uh, sports boosters when needed, with the Friends of Music when needed. Um, you know, I'm blessed that my kids had an opportunity to participate in a lot of the organizations and activities that the school offers. So I was able to, you know, be the room mom or be the team mom. And, and I think that gives me a lot to um, carry forward should I get a position on the board. Um, I was able to, because of retiring, have some time to commit to the building planning teams, the uh, teams, safety teams, the committees to help hire um, and that, that experience I'm going to take with me moving forward, too. So that's a little bit about me. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. 
Mama Oda. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here this evening. I'm a wife. I'm a mother of two boys. My oldest is a graduate of New Fee, and my youngest is a senior this year, so he will be graduating in a few short weeks. My husband and I moved to Dufane in 07 when we bought our first house, and I came from a small town called Countersport, Pennsylvania. I knew nobody. I wanted to make connections. So I dove right in with volunteering in classrooms, um, with the PTSA. I served every possible position you could hold on the PTSA. And through the years, I worked my way through sports as my boys grew, so did my volunteer opportunities until I found my way to the Board of Education. My first year on the Board of Education, I was appointed filling a seat. Um, then I ran and I served my term. And this is my fifth year on the board again with another appointed term. Um, I'm employed at the Village Eatery Italian Bistro in Lockport. I work there as the manager of the front end of the restaurant. I have been there for approximately 10 years now. So, um, in the restaurant industry, I have learned how a lot of transfer, transferable and valuable skills um, in terms of collaboration, time management, um, and communication. So I believe that these skills have helped me to be an effective board member. And I too am proud of the work that the board and I have done in the past few years. Thank you. What, different, what differentiates you from the other candidates and or board members what unique qualities would you bring to this role? I'm going to start with Corey. If elected to the board, I believe that I would bring a positive voice. I believe that I would bring energy and passion as I advocate for all the children in the district. One of the things that I learned while the kids were going through the school, especially with my oldest son, Matthew, who I'm sure most of you are aware has autism. So we, we worked alongside the teachers a little more closely, um, was you have to advocate for what you believe your child needs. And sometimes you have to have tough conversations. Sometimes you have to ask tough questions. And sometimes when you leave a meeting, you don't always get the answer or the outcome that you want. And I think that's given me the ability to grow as a person. Um, everybody likes to get what they want. <laughs> um, so when you don't, you have to grow and learn from it. And I think that that passion that I have not only for my kids, um, but for all the kids, and I think, again, those of you that know me and have seen the, the volunteer work that I've done, know that I love all the kids like they're my own. And I think I bring that, or will bring that, to the board if elected. Um, I also believe that throughout the time that the kids were in school, I was able to build really great relationships with the teachers, with the administration, with the staff in the buildings. And I think that's important moving forward because you have to work with all of those stockholders as a board member um, in order to hear their concerns uh, and help, you know, fix their concerns if possible. Um, so that's, those are some of the attributes that I believe that I will bring to the board for. Thank you. What differentiates you from the other candidates and or board members? What <clears throat> qualities would, bring, would you bring to this role? Rachel. I think that all of the board members and candidates have the same vision in mind. Um, we're here to advocate for our students, our faculty and staff, as well as our community. Um, unique qualities that I have that would serve that purpose is I, I have strong relationships within the community um, with key stakeholders. I currently have children that are in the district that will be in the district for up to 12 years. I have very strong organization skills as the, the business director at the palace. Um, I do have relationships with many community members outside of Newfane as well that could provide benefits to our district and that I am 
just a go-getter. I like to get things done and Hang on. What differentiates you from the other candidates and or board members? What unique qualities would you bring to this role? With the exception of Tony, I definitely bring experience on the board, having the knowledge and the know-how to hit the ground running on the moving parts in the district as they stand um, is important. And it, um, I also talked a little bit about being in the restaurant business. Uh, I believe that those are life skills. The I'm a good communicator, problem solver, I'm quick on my feet. Uh, being a forward thinker, I think, is, a, is an important quality of a board member. Not necessarily unique, but important. Um, I also have had two children go through the district, so I have the experience of knowing what the weaknesses and the strengths of the district were or and or are. Yeah, my God. Anthony, what differentiates you from the other candidates and or board members and what unique qualities would you bring to this role? Well, I think uh, one of the things that differentiates me uh, is just the number of years of experience that I've had with the, with the board. Um, my background in human resources uh, in manufacturing gives me a different perspective uh, from the other individuals that are on the board. So it's a, a different diversity to the board uh, when we're dealing with issues in what's in the budgets, et cetera. Um, so those are the those are the strengths that uh, that I bring. Um, I've been uh, the uh, lucky individual to be the father of two boys that went through and uh, graduated. In fact, one just graduated uh, from uh, college, uh, and so uh, I've got a high degree of. Uh, love for the things that were given to those boys uh, as uh, they were coming up to the uh, to the district as well thank you question uh, my main motivating factor is obviously my kids and just making sure that the district is as good as it can be for them as well as the other kids of the district um, i think that um a main motivator for me is just for the community and the parents and just to know who's here as the board, who's, who's got their back and who they can come to um, if they have anything. Thank you, Rachel. Corey, what motivates you to become a board member? So I'm motivated by a couple of things. Um, first thing I can think of is I'm motivated to continue seeing and being part of a team that makes New Fame be a school of excellence. What does that mean to me? It's not a title that gets put in a magazine or on a piece of paper. It means that we're giving the kids, the students, current and future, the best possible education that we can give them. It also, I'm also motivated by the theory, theory's the wrong word. I'm motivated by a statement that I've heard a lot recently, and that is, well, we're from New Fame, so we can't, or we're from New Fame, so we shouldn't expect this. And I'm motivated to change that narrative to we're from New Fame, so we can. We're from New Fame, so we should. Um, I'm super, super proud of New Fane. I, you know, bleed blue. That's the joke among a lot of people. And I'm motivated to make other people be proud of New Fane. And I'm motivated to make New Fane be proud of itself. And again, make the statement, we're from New Fane, so we did. Um, that, that motivates me. Uh, I'm motivated because I think, and I'm going to tag on to what Tony just said, I'm motivated because this district gave so much to my family and I, and I feel like this is the next step for me to give back. So that's one of the other things that motivates me as well. Thank you. Thank you. Tony, what motivates you to become a board member? 
Well, the fact that I've been involved uh, for the last six years and I want to continue to see the, uh, the progress that we've made. Uh, there's been a lot of improvements uh, that uh, have occurred over those, that period of time. Uh, and there's yet a lot of work to do. Um, so I want to be able to continue to contribute to that uh, in, in any way that I can. Thank you. Emma. What motivates you to become a board member? I'm motivated to continue doing the work that um, I've been a part of for the past five years that I've been on the board. To continue to see the changes in the district, the positive changes, um, to help grow this district, um, the, the education, the students, I'm motivated by my children. Um, I'm grateful for the education that they got in New Fate and the opportunities afforded to them. And I would love to see that continue for all of the students that come through New Fane. And I think that growing our district and being on a board, a collaborative board who has worked very well together, I'm passionate about that. I've enjoyed that. And that's what motivates me to continue doing that. Thank you. It's sort of two, uh, probably more than that, but there's two primary responsibilities. Uh, one is obviously managing a budget that can provide for all of the things that we are able to provide for now uh, and uh, managing that uh, that budget uh, process in a fiscally responsible manner uh, the other thing has to do with uh, you know we've done a lot uh, within this last capital budget uh, or capital project uh, to do things around safety and we've got a very active uh, district safety committee and I think that's one of the priorities uh, for the board is to make sure that uh, our students have got a safe environment to come uh, and learn. Thank you. Emma, what do you think the priorities should be for the school board? Maintaining a fiscally responsible budget for all stakeholders, the community, the students, um, all of the teachers, um, contracts, Adopting policies that give the district direction and keep us on those paths to achieve its goals. Um, hiring a superintendent and maintaining a superintendent and keeping a superintendent here, um, keeping teachers here, keeping all staff here, making this a district that people want to be in and want to stay in for the long haul. I could go through all of the things that are required by the board, that the board, you know, what we are responsible for, but I think maintaining a good relationship and continuing forward momentum in the district is, is what we're here to do. Thank you. Rachel. What do you think the priorities should be for the school board? I think along with what Tony and Emma said, um, and kind of piggybacking off of Emma saying about the superintendent is just putting strong leadership in all of our buildings. Um, we have two higher up admin positions that are open and we are interviewing for. Um, I think to continue to maintain our low tax increases over the last four years, we're one of the lowest in all of Western New York. And I think that's something that the board has done a great job and that we need to continue to maintain. Um, supporting our superintendent and admin in the School of Excellence division will then in turn attract young growing families to then increase our enrollment and then um, just creating strong relationships within our community. Thank you. Thank you. Corey, what do you think the priorities should be for the school board? So I agree with everybody. That's my answer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I want to piggyback on it and, and probably repeat what they said. I think right now the priority for the school board should be to attract, nurture, and retain top talent at every level. Not only the superintendents and the administration, but the teachers and the staff as well. Like everybody up here has said, if you do that, you're going to make New Fane a place that families want to come to. 
I also believe it's important to maintain a budget that is fiscally responsible to the taxpayer, but allows for our students to get the education and the programming that they need. Sometimes you've got to increase the budget so that we don't have to make cuts and so that we can offer our students these programs. I think as long as you can explain and justify those things, it works. And I'll agree with Rachel, the board has done a great job in that. I also think it's important that we make decisions for the financially for the future to make sure that we have a secure future. So in three years or five years, we're not in a place we don't want to be. Those are just some of the priorities. Again, I agree with them all. Safety is a big issue. Um, there was a lot done in the last capital project. Um, the Raptor program is now in effect. And I think as long as we protect the safety and well-being of the students and the uh, teachers, we're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Done poorly that you would change. Okay, so I think I'll start with the strengths and I'm gonna repeat a lot of what I just said. I think the board has done an outstanding job with improving the safety of the buildings for the benefit of the students and the staff. I believe that the board has done a phenomenal job implementing programs, um, both on the educational side and the athletic side. Um, I think some of the recognition that our teachers have gotten, I know there, there was just a recognition for master teachers. I mean, that's huge. Those teachers are being supported. And I think that's a, a direct reflect of the decision, reflection of the decisions that the board has made. Um, I know that Coming out of COVID wasn't easy. I mentioned that earlier. And I think the board has done a phenomenal job during that time, if we're going back five years, um, you know, in, in allowing our students to get the education that they needed during that time, supporting them, supporting the staff, supporting the families. Um, I think those are, are a lot of what's been really great. Um, I guess if I'm looking at things that maybe could use improvement. Um, you can never get lax with safety, right? We're doing a great job, but we don't wanna, we don't wanna fall short there. Um, again, this is a good and a bad because of COVID, a lot of our students really had social emotional um, issues that came to light that maybe weren't there. And uh, we've done a great job as a district, but the board and the superintendent um, you know, their partnership with Horizon. So that's, a, again, a really great thing I think they've done, but you don't want to get lax there either. You want to make sure you've got that support. Um, I always think discipline can be looked at, um, but I know that there's a lot of uh, new programs in place at the high school specifically that that's working. Um, those are some of the things that I think are good ending. Thank you. Thank you, Corinne. Tony, in your view, what has the district done well over the last five years? What has the district done poorly that you would change? Well, as far as uh, what has the uh, district done well, uh, I think we've talked about once before, but the fact that we've been able to manage uh, with the budget that's provided uh, for, for our teaching staff, that we've provided for excellent hiring. Uh, and so we've got an excellent teaching staff in my perspective. Um, we have uh, managed through COVID and, and the significant thing there was the fact that we were able to have our um, elementary kids go full time and not have the learning loss that a, that a lot of districts ended up having. To deal with. So I, I think that was a big plus. Uh, to talk about poorly, I don't think we've done anything poorly, but there's things that we can do better. Um, uh, for instance, uh, around safety, um, this year, um, with the leadership from Lisa, uh, we have a uh, much better uh, safety, district safety committee, uh, and Mrs. Miller and with the student safety committee, we've had things moving forward to improve the safety environment. around. The other thing is making sure that we're giving the best coaching to, uh, to our high school students, especially, uh, around um, where they should be going, coaching them and preparing them for moving out into whatever it is, the career that they're going to move into. 
uh, and I say career because it may be in the trades or it may be to, to colleges, but we need to make sure we've prepared them uh, effectively. Thank you. Emma. In your view, what has the district done well over the last five years? And what has the district done poorly that you would change? Thank you. Uh, the capital project, um, the updates to our district. The, we continue to impro improve programs and enhance services within our budget, specifically the um, adding courses at the high school. We have um, partnered with Ontario Shores for internships for our high school students. Um, we built public relations. We made our website one platform so that we are all communicating on the same platform. We've hired an amazing district photographer that puts us out and I think gives us an edge above all the rest. Uh, we have enhanced our safety features. Safety is always um, you know, of the utmost importance. Our mental health services that we have offered here at the middle school now so those are a few of the things just in the last five years that come to mind that we are doing well. I like to see the glass half full. So I don't think we're doing things poorly, but what I think we could focus on is a little more diversity training for our educators, a little more anti-bullying presentations to help us navigate this world of keyboard warriors and help our students navigate that world and more counseling. After COVID, it was just such a tough time for everybody, mentally, physically, emotionally. I think we need to be supporting our teachers with more counselors. Thank you. And Rachel, in your view, what has the district done well over the last five years and what has the district done poorly that you would change? I think the obvious answer, which everybody already said is our capital project. Um, the stadium, the reactor system, were both excellent additions to our district. Um, that's going to continue to be something amazing for our district for years to come. Um, keeping our tax increase minimal is something that the, the board and district has done well over the last five years. I think that the curriculum um, post COVID, COVID was a thing. It was a hard thing, especially for our teachers and our students, um, but just keeping the students hungry to learn. Um, last board meeting, we saw a presentation from some middle school students and they have an agriculture club and a library club, which I think are amazing additions to schools, um, just giving students a variety of, of options that's not your typical football, chess club, um, and just keeping them hungry. I think that the, the district and the board over the last five years has done an amazing job and maybe some improvements in general would, I mean, you can never be too safe. I think continued safety training for staff and faculty um, hand in hand with Niagara County Sheriff's. I, anything that you can do to keep our students safe is, can be improved. Um, and then I, as I said before, just our enrollment, um, making new thing, um, a district that people want to move to and send their kids to, um, which we have been taking steps currently. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Question number five. Emma, we're going to start with you. What do you believe are the greatest challenges currently facing our school district? I think I spoke a little bit in my what could we do better section um, in terms of diversity. I think that we need more diverse diversity training. We have students that are entering our district that are not English speaking or our different um, educational needs, special educational needs. We have low income students. We have um, different, just different ethnicities. So I think we really need to focus a lot more or just more on diversity in our district. 
Thank you. Tony, what do you believe are the greatest challenges currently facing our school district? Well, one of the challenges is the fact that we have decreasing enrollment. Uh, and so we need to we need to see what we can do to improve that. My hope is that with the capital budget and the facilities improvements, I mean, you look at this facility and how, how much nicer it is than it used to be. Uh, we've got to feel, well, I'm hoping that those kinds of things will attract more families to come to New Fane, because I think New Fane has a very good reputation uh, outside from people uh, looking at, uh, at New Fane. So that's, that's one of the things we need to work on. In the other is managing the budget. Um, we have uh, got um, challenges uh, as uh, the fact that some of the uh, some of state aid is going to start dwindling uh, based on the, uh, the governor's recent uh, actions to start uh, reducing that. And so working to manage the budget in a way that we can continue to provide all the things we're currently providing uh, in, in the, then uh, make sure that we uh, don't uh, end up with uh, any kind of uh, financial problems. Thank you. Corey, what do you believe are the greatest challenges currently facing our school district? Again, I agree with Tony and Emma. Um, I think one of the greatest challenges currently is the budget. Uh, Tony just said it. State aid is ending, the COVID money is ending. How do we continue to give what we're giving and give what the kids need and deserve and, and not have to increase the budget substantially? I'll piggyback by saying again, when you look at all of that, you have to make sure that you're looking for the future so we don't end up in trouble three or five years down the road. I certainly think that that's an ongoing challenge, not new to any school district. Um, the second one is, I think pre preparing students for a world that's ever changing. Um, it doesn't look the way it does when I was in school, when you were in school. So how do we, how do we teach the kids in a way that they can learn? Um, you know, not everybody leaves school and goes on to education, you know, secondary education. The trades are, are huge, especially in our area. So I think the challenge there is to make sure that we can offer those programs, those classes, to the students. Rachel brought up the agricultural program. Um, that was just wonderful to see because that's something forward thinking. It's something, um, you know, not unique to this area. A lot of kids grow up and they're the third or fourth generation. And, and we need to be able to, again, support them and allow them to learn what they want to learn. Um, so I think that's a challenge, right? Just being able to help and prepare the students for an ever-changing world. And I think the last challenge currently is, again, uh, attracting and keeping talent at all levels. Um, if you do that, a lot of the rest of this will fall into place. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be able to attract new families because we'll have a phenomenal staff, and that's, that's the goal. So thank you. Thank you, Rachel. What do you believe are the greatest challenges currently facing our school district? Um, I will echo everybody with the enrollment issue um, and leave it at that. I think um, the, the social emotional learning and not just learning from a textbook or a Chromebook and just giving these kids real life experiences, um, talking it out, talking about your feelings, um, I think that another part of that kind of is making the kids want to come to school and stay in school. I think that um, attendance, once you get up into the middle of high school, kind of falls. Um, they come for the two or three classes that they're required to do. Um, and just really focusing on what we can provide them to keep them in school all day and want them to keep coming back every day, um, which could be, as Corey was talking about, like, uh, a focus on trade schools and what these kids can do after high school that's not college. Um, bringing back the basics, home ec classes. Um, I know that they have business classes where they learn how to write resumes and just stuff that if they're not going to college, what they need to learn 
to enter the real world after graduation. Do you believe our district needs to address in its academic program and offerings? What changes would you recommend? I think we need to, um, well, let me, let me back up. From an academic perspective, I think we're providing a pretty well-rounded academic uh, foundation. Um, but I think we need to continue to look for partnerships uh, like the, uh, the uh, one with the credit union uh, so that kids have an opportunity to see something more than just uh, the basic courses. Uh, so provide more opportunities like the, uh, like the clubs where they can get out and experience different things than just, uh, you know, just academics. I think that's it. Thank you. Rachel, what issues do you believe our district needs to address in its academic program and offerings, and what changes would you recommend? Um, I would agree with Tony, and I think that our district offers a, a very well-rounded variety of classes and programs. Um, as I mentioned, the, the different clubs that we saw come in and I think that branching out and working with the community like Ontario Shores, other small businesses within the community, um, just to show them, as I said before, what life is after graduation. Thank you. Corey, what issues do you believe our district needs to address in its academic program and offerings, and what changes would you recommend? I agree with Rachel and Tony. We offer a lot of great opportunities to our students. I think as long as we continue to support our teachers, um, get our teachers uh, in classes that, that get them thinking differently, maybe teaching differently. Not all kids learn the same, we all know that. Um, so how do we teach to those children so they can learn? I think it's important that our district takes a look at what do we have for the advanced learners? And where do we start looking at those students? Is it in high school where they can take uh, the college classes? Or is it at the middle school where we need to challenge them? Or can we even start looking at that opportunity in elementary school? Um, that would be a suggestion that I would bring forward is, is how can we um, offer challenging classes to the, the, the students that are ahead? Um, I think it's important that you look at all the students and um, make your choices for them. Thank you. Thank you. And Emma. What issues do you believe our district needs to address in its academic programs and offerings, and what changes would you recommend? Just to piggyback a little bit off of what Corey said, I think putting all students of different learning levels in the same classes, um, it's, not a, it's not a good learning environment. I think finding classes that suit our special ed students all the way up to our higher education learning students. I think that we need to find balance within and create programs that provide an avenue for all learners to learn effectively. Um, I think putting policies in place or pushing for policies that that um, have uniform teaching, I think it just like waters down education and it makes it tough for our educators to be engaged teachers and to do what they love. What would you do as a board member to ensure that after school programs and other activities remain in place for students? So I believe that those programs have a place. I believe those poor programs are important. Um, and as long as they are helping further the education and support the students, I would do make votes to increase the budget if needed, to make other cuts if needed? I think that's a tough question. I'm gonna be very honest for me to answer since I don't currently sit on the, the board. I don't um, have the knowledge that Tony and Emma have when it comes to a question like this. Um, again, I, I would say though that if, as long as those, those programs are important um, and we can keep them in the budget, that's what I would do. I would vote to, to make sure that happens. Thank you. Thank you. Emma, 
What would you do as a board member to ensure that after school programs and other activities remain in place for students? As a board member, I'm only one person. So as much as I would like to say, you know, this is what I would do, you are one person on a board of seven. So you bring those issues to the table um, and hopefully we can find a common ground that suits everybody's needs. Thank you. Tony, what would you do as a board member to ensure that after school programs and other activities remain in place for the students? I think the, uh, as a board, we would need to consider what, what are the activities that are going on right now and what is the level of interest in those activities? So that uh, as we look at budgeting, because budgeting is one of the factors uh, that you deal with, uh, so that you can support uh, the, the teachers to be uh, resources to those uh, extra activities. Um, are, we, are we providing things that are of high value to, to most of the students uh, or not? So I think it's evaluating what we're doing and then budgeting for those that, that uh, we want to continue. Thank you. And Rachel. What would you do as a board member to ensure that after school programs and other activities remain in place for the students? Um, everything everybody else said um, as well. I mean, I would reach out to our community. Um, I mean, I'm not above asking for help if it's going to help somebody else. Um, work with the town board, see if there's something that they can collaborate with the Board of Education with, um, search for funding. I mean, I think that the, the board and other admin do this already, but what's one more person looking for funding, um, especially for maintaining these after school programs that families depend on, uh, just to get by. Thank you. Tony, as a board member, where would you look to make budget cut? That's a good question because um, the first place you need to look at is what is the enrollment and what uh, will the enrollment support? Um, there are a number of things that we do right now. Uh, you know, we provide for uh, the school resources, pens, pencils, and everything else. No one has to have a um, list to go out to Walmart beginning of school. So there are little things that we do that uh, if, if we had to make cuts, I'd look at the little things that uh, that are not essential, but are nice to have. Now, I'd like to see those things continue, but we'd have to look at it that way. And then we'd have to look at enrollment and what, what will our uh, enrollment support as far as the courses that we provide. Thank you. Rachel. As a board member, where would you look to make budget cuts if needed? I think that not being a board member, um, I don't have the knowledge to properly answer that question right now. Um, but I do think that if I were to become a board member, I would look to admin, faculty, and staff to get their recommendations. Um, they are the front line. They know what our students need and um, take that back to the board and make a decision based on that. Thank you. Corey, as a board member, where would you look to make budget cuts if needed? I'm gonna piggyback on what Tony said. Right now, the uh, district offers the free lunch, the not having to go out and get school supplies. You know, we don't charge to attend athletic uh, events. So those little things, as he referenced to them, would be what I would look at first. Do we have to go back to having families supply the, the school supplies? You know, do we charge? Um, I also agree with Rachel. That's a tough question as not being a board member to answer, but I, I will give you my opinion on this. I think you have to, in my opinion, make education a top priority. That's what the students are here for, so that we can prepare them for the, the real world. 
And if that means looking at after school activities, if that means looking at athletics, if that means you have to look at every single uh, component of, of what we offer them and decide where cuts are needed. Um, but I'll say this, I hope we never have to get there. And I think that we're on the path where we're being financially responsible and planning for that three, five, seven years. Um, and if elected, I, you know, I want to work with that team to continue that so that we never have to see budget cuts. Thank you. Thank you. And Emma, as a board member, where would you look to make budget cuts if needed? Just echoing the responses of the other candidates here. Uh, how do we trim the fat in our budget without cutting classrooms with programs? How do we, maybe we look at downsizing buildings. Maybe we look at right-sizing our athletic teams, uh, eliminating teams that we might not, that might not have a lot of interest or even collaborating with other schools. Uh, there, it would be a hard ask, but it, we would certainly have to find ways to get it done. What does district safety mean to you? And with today's growing violence, would you consider increasing the care to say? I think that with the secure entryways in our building, with the new Raptor program and new programs uh, that the safety team has been talking about as of late with walkie talkies in each building and communications within each building, I think that we are definitely doing right by our district in terms of keeping our children safe. It is the utmost important job we have as a district. And I think we're doing all the thing, all the right things, so. Thank you. Corey, what does district safety mean to you? And with today's growing violence, would you consider increasing staff security staff? Kids can't learn unless they feel safe, and teachers can't do their job unless they feel safe. So uh, to me, it's, it's one of the most important things. That, that's what it means. With that said, I agree with Emma. The Raptor program, the two-door system, um, you know, it's, it's enhanced the security. And I believe that I wouldn't be able to clearly give you an answer without consulting with people like, you know, Deputy Needle, who's probably leading uh, the conversations with the safety committee um, right now, because I don't know what more can be done. What more can we financially, uh, you know, afford to do? Um, I believe, like Emma said, that we're, we're in a great place right now. I mean, we, we went from not having these things to having them. That's great. So my answer is I would have to consult with Ray, hear where the safety committee's at, and again, what are the ideas that they're putting forth and can we financially afford to do those? Thank you. Thank you. Rachel, what does district safety mean to you? And with today's growing violence, would you consider increasing security staff? I think that safety is the obvious, keeping our children safe from physical harm. But I would also say that uh, keeping our children safe from bullying. Um, so that is something that I want to also consider in, when thinking about safety. To answer your question about more safety officers, I don't think that there can ever be too many. Um, I would want to ensure that they are um, a friendly face for our students. You don't want them to see an armed security guard that, that they are unfamiliar with and that cause stress to them. Um, I think that the first step in considering this would to obviously work with Deputy Needle and the Niagara County Sheriff's um, and continue our safety trainings, bring in the, the Niagara County Sheriff's to run drills with our teachers and just make sure that our teachers are remaining calm and just showing our students that they are safe and that they are there to keep them safe. Thank you. Tony, what does district safety mean to you? And with today's growing violence, would you consider increasing security staff? 
Well, I think uh, there's two aspects to, to district safety. There's the, the learning environment, and uh, as uh, I think it was Emma mentioned, around uh, making sure that we've got control so we're going to have boy and those kinds of things going on. Um, so it's that in its facilities, having safe the facilities that are, that are in good repair. Uh, as far as adding uh, safety uh, resources, uh, I think we need to consider where we are uh, at the time. Right now, I think uh, that would not be uh, necessary because uh, I don't think we see uh, indicators that are saying that, that there is that level of concern. However, we need to keep track of that. Uh, and uh, if if it was needed to do that, then uh, we could we could uh, figure a way to budget that in. I think what we're doing with the uh, district safety committee putting together the um, uh, the radios so that we can now uh, within the next uh, I'd say three months be able to communicate when there's issues between all of the uh, buildings as opposed to having to rely on cell phones. Uh, it's going to improve our ability to respond to uh, any kind of issues, uh, safety issues or uh, uh, disturbances that might occur. So I think that's a plus moving forward and, and it would minimize the need to add safety resource officers. A number to hear parent concerns. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Besides attending a school board meeting, what will you do as a board of ed member to hear parent concerns? Well, having been on the board and we only hear parent concerns if they're brought to our attention, either through the board meetings or via email. I can honestly say that in the time that I've sat on the board, I can count on my hands the number of parents that actually do reach out via email. So if we don't know about it, we, there's nothing we can do about it. So I would definitely say, reach out, talk to us, inform us. If we don't know something, we can't be of assistance. Thank you. Rachel, besides attending a school board meeting, what will you do as a board of education member to hear parent concerns? Um, I think just promoting Please come to the board meetings if necessary, if you have any concerns. Um, being at school events, introducing myself, I'm on the board if there's anything that you need. Um, continuing to volunteer within the community, not just at district events, but at the community day. Um, just getting, getting out there. I think having a social media presence um, while I don't want everybody messaging me on Facebook, um, but not everybody can come to meetings and not everybody is comfortable enough writing a formal email. Um, I think just looking through Facebook specifically at parent concerns and they might not feel comfortable coming to a board member to say what their concerns are and that's okay. I, we can see them. Um, and we can address them without them physically telling us that. Thank you. Tony, besides attending a board, school board meeting, what will you do as a board of education member to hear parent concerns? Uh, I think it's a matter of being available, being available uh, at events um, so that uh, uh, when parents uh, see us, uh, and recognize that we're board members, they, they um, have some level of comfort of coming to us. And then it's a matter of then uh, any one of us taking that to the board so that um, because we can't respond uh, for the board, uh, but we can carry that message forward, know what the issue is, and then uh, bring it forward to the board so that we can uh, take action with the action that should be done. Thank you. And Corey, besides attending a school board meeting, what will you do as a board of education member to hear parent concerns? I'll be visible in the community. I've done that with uh, the roles that I've had with the PTA, with the alumni, uh, for my children, not only at the sporting events, but the spelling bees, the academic awards, the musicals, just being out there, 
Um, oh, I shop local, I eat local, I support local. Being visible in the community, that's how the, the parents come up and talk to you. Being at the soccer matches, you know, the football games, just being everywhere and being open to having conversations with people and listening. I've been told that if you get a seat on the board, you gotta become a good listener. And I'm ready to do that. So you've gotta listen and then take that information back to the board and you know, see if you can help help that family or that parent with the concern. That's what I would do. Thank you. Thank you. I think the biggest difference that I would like to see um, if I was on the board is just having a comprehensive relationship within the community. Um, I think that it's important for enrollment for us to have a relationship with John Syracuse and the, the town board and how we can collaborate to make New Fane a more attractive district. Um, and in turn, that will increase families that move to New Fane, that will increase tourism that is coming to New Fane to visit those families. It's, it's good for not only the district, um, but also the community, small businesses, um, and essentially just money that is brought into the community. Thank you. Corey, if elected, what about our school district do you want to be different by the end of your term? Like Rachel, I'd like to see more partnerships. Um, with the board, the board with this, you know, the school, the staff, the community, and the town. If that happens, good things will happen for, for all those stakeholders. Um, I'd like to see there be a more positive, proud, we're from Newfane. That, that, I mean that. I, I, want, I want everybody to say, you know, my kids go to Newfane. My kids graduated from Newfane. This is what the people in the community and the the teachers and the staff in New Fame did for my family. Um, that's what I'd like to see if elected. Thank you. Thank you. Emma, if elected, what about our school district do you want to be different by the end of your term? Same where our district has come from since my children grew up here. I know that we've moved in the right direction. We have great relationships with the community the board, our district as a whole. So I feel like we're on the right track. I think that continuing those relationships and building on those relationships keep moving us in the right direction. New Fame is a culture. It's a beautiful community. There's no denying that. I don't, I don't care who you are. Um, and I'm gonna beat this horse a little bit more. Diversity, diversity, diversity. We need that part of education for our students, for our families. And um, we also need to tackle the vaping issue. That I would love to see. It's a huge topic of conversation and concern, but it's something that we need to look at. And it's not just New Fame, it's everywhere, but that's one of the things I would love to see us tackle. Thank you. And Tony, if elected, what about our school district do you want to be different by the end of your term? Well, one thing is I'd like to see that an increased enrollment. I'd like to see the, uh, the student body grow and uh, uh, more families moving into new fame uh, and coming into our district. So that would be one thing. Um, right now we have policies uh, in, in programs to, to deal with safety in the event that there's an emergency. But I would like to see us get in place a very effective and well outlined and understood uh, uh, response program that engages uh, hey, um, all of the, uh, the schools uh, and uh, has well identified responsibilities uh, for managing in the event we have to deal with a crisis. Um, uh, I think anything we can do to increase community engagement uh, is a plus, uh, although I agree with Emma, we've got a lot that we've been doing. Uh, we ought to be, and I hope we are, and I am proud of what we have right now, 
is uh, is a uh, district. And so we just need to keep moving that forward. The year after they have graduated. I lost me say for about a year. I went to Phoenix, Arizona, and I came right back. Um, New Fane is just, it's home. It, it feels like home. It smells like home. Um, we are a small town community. Everybody knows everybody. Um, I say the name Richard Pixley and people just go crazy. Um, not all good things. <laughs> um, and that's great. And I love that. I love I love hearing stories about my grandpa, my mom, my uncles, I, and, and now my kids. Um, I love that people just genuinely care here. Um, you'll see somebody that you haven't seen in years and, oh my gosh, I can't believe that Belle is so old and neither can I, but, um, and then just being taught by the same teachers that my kids are now being taught by, um, or people that I went to school with are now teaching my kids. And it, it's really just, um, it's just a great place. And I could go on for more than 30 seconds that I have left. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Emma, why new thing? Why have you chosen to raise your family here or stay here after they have graduated? The initial reason my husband and I came to New Fane, he was from Lockport and I was from a cow town. And I wanted to raise my children in a small town. And when we were looking for school districts in business first, New Fane was at the top of the charts for education. And so we chose New Fane. We found a cute little home in the village and we have raised our boys here and the academic and athletic opportunities that have been afforded to them in our time here in New Fame. I wouldn't change it for the world. I'm grateful. They're grateful. And we have forged some incredible relationships with people in this community that in itself has been life changing. So like I said before, my last statement, New Fame is a community and it's a culture and where else would you rather be? Thank you, Emma. Tony, why New Fame? Why have you chosen to raise your family here or stay here after they have graduated? Well, I raised the second half of my family here. Uh, I have to say that uh, my son and daughter that are now 48 and 53 uh, did not grow up in New Fame. Um, I was, uh, I think I said earlier, I, I came from a little town called Woodhall. There was 300 people. Uh, I grew up on a farm for the first uh, 11 years, and then I was in a farm village for the rest of that time. So when uh, Connie and I were looking for a place to relocate, uh, I had moved three or four times with DuPont, and this was the last move. Um, I was looking for a place where it was rural. Uh, I could have a house where I could look out my window into somebody else's window. Um, and. Uh, as it turns out, when we uh, when we adopted the boys, uh, it, it brought us into the school system. But originally, the reason for New Fane and the reason I stay in New Fane is because it feels like home. It feels comfortable uh, in this environment, and so that's why New Fane. Thank you, Corey. Why New Fane? Why have you chosen to raise your family here or stay here after they have graduated? Mike and I initially chose New Fame because at the time, the school district um, had what Matthew needed. And we're blessed. We are. We're blessed for the education that the kids received here. Um, it gave us great pride to put a brick down that had four generations of Mike's family on it. Um, we were happy to do that. Not a lot of people can say that they had four generations go through New Fame. Um, we've stayed now that all our kids are out because as everyone up here has stated, it's, it's a family. Um, we've been able to give our kids opportunities because of the phenomenal people that we've met in New Fame. 
um, you know, I'll say that the law of everybody in New Fame is just family that you don't know you have yet. I mean, there were teachers that taught my husband and then were fortunate enough to teach my kids. Um, you know, that doesn't happen in, in big schools. And I go back to that again. Sorry, it's what I know, but you know, it takes a village and New Fame was the village we needed to get back to where he is today. Um, so that's why we stayed. That's why we'll always stay. We love it up on the Kuma Road. We got a great thing going up there. We love New Fame. Thanks. Thank you, Corey. Since I started teaching 31 years ago, our district has gone from number one, progressively lower and lower in rankings. Our children, our community deserve better. What are your ideas for how we can fix this problem? So I've said it a bunch of times throughout the evening, we need to attract and, and maintain and, and, and keep quality educators, quality administration, and not settle. We need to offer programs that allow our kids to be ready for the real world. And I think as a board, we need to, and I'm not sure if anybody's touched on this, but we need to continually monitor the academic achievement of our students. I think that's important. Um, are our kids learning what they should? Are they ready? Are our teachers teaching what they should so our kids are prepared? Those are the basic fundamentals of what we need to do for our school to get back up uh, to that school of excellence. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel, since I started teaching 31 years ago, our district has gone from number one to progressively lower and lower in rankings. Our children, our community deserve better. What are your ideas for how we can fix this problem? Um, first, I would like to know where those rankings came from because the vein has been great um since i've been here um but in all seriousness um i think as corey said just attracting and keeping quality educators um staying on top of new and upcoming technology new curriculum and i think that within the last five to ten years we have been making quality steps to improve those rankings and we just need to keep that momentum. Thank you. Emma, since I started teaching 31 years ago, our district has gone from number one to progressively lower and lower in the rankings. Our kids, our community deserve better. What are your ideas for how we can fix this problem? We need a leader that empowers others. We need a leader that stays put. Um, so that would be the first, it's our first hurdle, is putting in place a good leader that can help us move in the right direction. They've touched base on, on the numbers, our academics, maintaining programs, giving, bringing in programs. They're gonna help our students to excel and be better, be better learners. So, Thank you. Tony, since I started teaching 31 years ago, our district has gone from number one to progressively lower and lower in the rankings. Our kids, our community deserve better. What are our, your ideas for how we can fix this problem? Well, I don't want to sound like a, uh, a broken record, but uh, my other three colleagues here have commented on the same thing, the hiring excellence making sure we got excellence in, in educators and in leadership uh, is the first thing. And then measure, measure what's going on and uh, determine, okay, with the, with the help of teachers and the staff, uh, troubleshoot to see if there are deficiencies, what can we do to improve those uh, together? Thank you. Thank you. Improve transparency and make school district info more widely available. I said it before and I'll say it again, um, social media presence. I mean, that is 
good, bad, or indifferent, that is where everybody is getting their information from. Um, setting up a Board of Education Facebook page um, to relay information. I regularly get emails, um, but that's not to say that parents are reading those emails. So just putting it out there in as many ways as we can, snail mail, uh, emails, posts. I know um, the elementary school uses Class Dojo, uh, Google Classroom. I mean, is it overkill? Probably, but um, if if the district wants the transparency, transparency and communication, then that's how we'll have to do it. Thank you. Corey, what specific steps would you take as a school board member to improve transparency and make school district info information more widely available? I agree with Rachel. I think it's important to get information out so that you get ahead of the spread of misinformation and untruths. And in this day and age, it happens immediately on social media. Um, I think that the Classroom teachers can get out more information. I think the building admin can get out more information. It's my opinion that if you give people information and keep them informed, they're much less likely to get upset with the information that they're getting. It gives them time to digest it, understand it, ask questions about it. So I agree with Rachel, social media is super important, whether they get out the information in text, on social media, uh, again, Classroom Dojo, there's a lot of um, opportunities and a lot of different ways that, that we can get it out. Um, and I think it goes without saying that, you know, you've got to be transparent, but only up until a point because there is information that obviously has to remain confidential. Um, but that's that's what I would do. I would encourage those, those forms of getting out that information. Thank you. Thank you. Tony, what specific steps would you take as a school board member to improve transparency and to make school district information more widely available? I think the steps that we've taken so far uh, in the social media aspect and with the upgrade to the, the web uh, page that we have uh, is a step in the right direction. Uh, concern that I have in trying to respond to a question like that, though, is what is the definition of lack of transparency? Where is the question coming from? And what is it that uh, we're, we're not being transparent enough about? Uh, and so we could consider uh, engaging uh, cross-section from the community and the, the uh, faculty and, and the board to ask that question or answer that question. What is it that's lacking in transparency so that then we can address it? Thank you. And Emma, what specific steps would you take as a school board member to improve transparency and make school, dist school district information more widely available. Probably just sound like a broken record here, guys, but I believe that transitioning to the parent square that we're using now, where blasts go out via email and text, has been helpful in getting information out quickly. I also think the upgrades to our website, we're still working on that, but that's moving in the right direction. Social media at all levels, each building has their own page, so that puts out information. There's people that aren't on social media, so we still have to find ways to get it out there. But I do believe that we have been transparent. As a member of the board to ensure that our higher level functioning students are being challenged at all levels. Well, we can look at what we're doing right now and see where is it meeting the need and where is it not meeting the need. I think it's a matter of assessing uh, what we're doing, uh, and I don't have the detail on that right now, but I think it's looking at it, uh, looking at the concern of uh, obviously that there's a feeling we're not providing for it, and what do we do to um, take care of that? Thank you. Emma, what can you do as a board member of the board to ensure that our higher functioning students are being challenged at all levels. I agree with Tony. It's a matter of assessing where our students lie now, what are our programs offering them, and how do we give them programs that will challenge them? Thank you. Rachel? 
What can you do as a member of the board to ensure that our higher functioning students are being challenged at all levels? I think as a board member, I would ask our, our faculty, staff, and parents um, what, as a district, we are missing in that um, sense and just get feedback from them on what offerings that we should have that we don't to challenge those children. Thank you. And Corey, what can you do as a member of the board to ensure that our higher functioning students are being challenged at all levels? So I'm in agreement with everybody else by saying that we would have to assess where we are at right now. Where are we lacking? Uh, I think I spoke to it earlier. Do we have to start challenging these students at the elementary, at the middle school? Um, you know, what do these programs cost? Do we have the teachers that are qualified to, to teach and work with these students? Um, so to, I guess, conclude this answer, I would say as a board member, we would encourage the superintendent, the administration, and the teachers um, to advise us, you know, who are these students, what are their needs, and then look to see if we can meet those needs. Thank, Thank you. All right, on behalf of the PTSA, I would like to thank those of you in attendance tonight, as well as the school and its administration for allowing us to host this event here tonight, all, and all the volunteers that helped to make that happen. Candidates, thank you for taking time to answer our questions and letting the community get to know you better. We wish you all the best in the upcoming election. The Budget and Board of Education candidate vote is next Tuesday, May 21st at the elementary school from noon until 8. Please make sure to get out and vote. And thank you all again for participating in this event and have a good night. Thank you.